and we will start the video. All right, so uh, we are on uh, March 20th. We are about a week into schools being suspended along with practices and competitions. We've mm -hmm. got five of the six uh, DVC boys coaches together. Uh, we did this on a whim, so Coach Holt is not uh, boycotting this. We, we just had trouble getting a hold of him. Uh, maybe we'll see if he'll join us during the course of this. Uh, I'm Kevin Rafferty. I'm supposed to be the host of the indoor DVC boys conference meet uh, for Wisconsin <laughs> Valley. We'll let everyone sort of go around and then we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, every event here. Chris Arthurs. I'm the head boys track and field coach at Naperville North. Uh, I'm Steve Stack. I'm the head boys track and field coach at Naperville Central. I'm Mike Kennedy. Uh, I am the head boys track and field coach at Nequa Valley. Aaron Lewis, head coach uh, at Matia Valley. And Coach Holt is the head coach at DeKalb. We, we sent him a couple texts and, and haven't gotten him in time to do this where uh, most of us are juggling e-learning and parenting and uh, making sure that our houses <laughs> are uh, supplied and all sorts of other stuff. So here's what we wanted to do is with no conference meet around and athletes not being able to compete and a lot of times not being able to get together to practice even, uh, we want to give some sense of normalcy, uh, go through the uh, list of freshmen and sophomores of who's got the best mark in each event and let that coach talk about that athlete a little bit, and then go through uh, juniors and seniors, who's got the best mark in each of those events, and let that coach talk to, about them a little bit and give a, a little sense of normalcy, a little sense of community, and remind all the athletes out there that we care for you, we love you, this is hurting us as much as it's hurting you, and uh, you're not alone in... Uh, <coughs> your daily routine of trying to keep your school together and trying to keep your body together. And, and remember that we're going to come out the backside of this and we're going to get together and we're going to celebrate how great track and field is when we can finally get together and, and do a meet that's not a virtual meet, but an actual competition. Yeah, and for all the guys in our conference, keep working out. You know, yes. Know yes. It's going to happen because I guarantee everybody in the DVC has the same basic values. And those values are improvement no matter what's happening. Whether we've got a meet coming up or not, mm -hmm. you guys should be uh, working hard trying to take a step forward while we're off. Uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. It's, it's not convenient, but you try to improve yourself. All right, so we'll start with the freshmen and sophomores. I'll just go down the list. Athletes that are watching this at home, remember this is your, your head coach talking, maybe not your event area coach. And so if your, your head coach is not uh, – giving you the same uh, notes that you think your, your event area coach is. Remember, we did this with, I think in the case of Coach Kennedy, about a half an hour warning, and I think the rest of us would make like a three-hour <laughs> warning uh, on a whim. If that. Yeah. So the top time in the 3,200 fresh soft is Nicholas Keeling. You want to talk about him a little bit, Coach Stack? Uh, yeah, so uh, Nicholas uh, is a sophomore um, who was just putting a ton of work, um, was a big part of the cross-country uh, season for us. Um, and it's just been a machine uh, this indoor season. So um, he is currently our school record holder in the 3,200 uh, indoors with his, uh, was it 942? Um, so really just a, an impressive effort up and down uh, the track day in and day out from him. Okay. Uh, next event, it was easy. I was worried about having a different leader in the 60 hurdles and the 55 hurdles. And on both hurdle events and both dashes, it's the same kid in both distances. Uh, so we got a young man that uh, Coach Lewis is going to talk about for the 60 hurdles, the 55 high, high hurdles, and the 400, Jalen Johnson. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jalen is a pretty special young man. Um, I've actually known about him um, since before he got to Matia Valley from Coach Rafferty <laughs> um, because he has uh, some connections with him. And uh, Jalen's just really uh, worked hard. Um, he's only a sophomore, so we're looking for you know great things for him for years to come. He's already, uh, this sophomore year, has um, taken the hurdles um, over for our program, um, really led those guys, um, and pushed them all to um, um, get PRs for themselves as well and, and also for himself. Um, so he's really worked hard to uh, refine his technique, get faster through the hurdles, uh, become more of a leader for uh, his teammates as well, and he's really shined. What really surprised us is that he's really helped us out in the 400 as well, which well, we've obviously been training him in the 400 to get ready for the 300 hurdles outdoors, um, you know, but not compromising his, um, you know, um, 
performances in the short hurdle races as well. So he's really uh, worked well in the 400 Open and um, has led off our 4x4 relay two times and helped us to get our uh, season best time of um, uh, 336 uh, so far in the, or 332, sorry, in the um, 4x4 relay. So that has done uh, very well. All right, next guy is my guy, uh, 68 dash, 55 dash, and then he's also the lead mark in the 200 is Jameer Harris. Uh, Jameer was a freshman for me last year, obviously. Uh, had a really nice season. I think kind of surprised himself with how good he was. Um, really a stud for us. Uh, probably a varsity guy. It, it's If we would have actually held the conference meet, I got a number of these sophomores that we were having the discussion. Are they coming up? Are they going down? It, it would have been a little bit of Jameer's choice. Uh, with everything that started going down last Friday when the school started getting canceled, I, I ran into the building because I wanted the kids to see me and sort of having those short talks before we could have our faculty meeting and realize exactly how uh, how little contact they wanted us having. And Jameer had a real easy conversation with me, said, Coach, I'm going to be sprinting. It doesn't matter what's going on. I'll be fit. I'll be working out. And whenever we're back, I'll be ready to go. So, you know, you got to love a little spark plug like that, that loves doing the work and loves being ready for things. And, you know, he's, he was having a great sophomore year, and I hope we get to finish it off. And and this is a young man that's going to have big things ahead of him. Um, Let's see, 400 dash we did with Jalen Johnson, uh, 200. So next guy is Aiden Oster, who's my guy in the 800. Uh, Aiden was a guy that had a great cross country season for me, sort of stumbled a little bit uh, in the lead up to uh, conference regionals and sectionals. We got a little sick. Uh, came off of a winter season where I think he was kind of figuring out who he was, getting ready for the season, then hopped right in an 800 and start looking really good and ran his time the week before uh, the season got suspended. And, you know, I, I think this is a guy that probably would have ended up running for us in a varsity sectional. So um, next guy in the 1600 is Gabe Ryan from Naperville North. Sorry, guys, I'm working, looking through kids while getting this done. Um, Gabe, one of our uh, top distance kids was on uh, our top 15 cross country team this last year. Um, Ran an unbelievable 3,200 the last meet we had of the season at York. Um, really a foundational piece of our distance crew between um, Jake, some of our, you know, Tommy, Julian, and Gabe's one of our top younger runners. Um, bright future. Um, really a big core of the group of our distance guys that we have coming. All right. And I think that does all the running events that aren't relays. Uh, if we go through the field events for freshmen and sophomores, Xavier Landon for Mattia Valley and High Jump. Coach Lewis? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Z uh, Xavier London, actually, like the city. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't read my own writing. Um, yeah, Xavier is another one of our uh, outstanding sophomores, just like Galen. Uh, we have a very good sophomore group of athletes, and Xavier's one of them as well. Um, he's very battle tested. I mean, he, he's been a varsity high jumper for us since his freshman year last year and competed at sectional last year alongside our um, sectional champion, Price Kiwosagi, and was basically, you know, not step by step with them, but definitely used the, um, Price's um, expertise to kind of um, get himself ready as well. And so he's really taken up now being the, basically the main high jumper his sophomore year and um, has uh, set the school record for indoor um, um, at the freshman sophomore level, um, just under five feet 11. Um, and just barely made uh, six feet um, at, at an indoor meet at uh, Proviso West. So we're definitely looking for him to have some continued success um, going into outdoor season. Um, obviously getting outside is going to be a bunch of difference as we'll actually be able to high jump every day, <laughs> you know, not having indoor facility. Yes, yes, definitely. So then definitely once he gets his rhythm down, gets his technique down a little bit more, um, great hardworking kid too. I mean, other coaches have even said in meets that like, man, he's such a coachable kid and, um, such a hardworking kid and really um, takes setbacks in stride even when he's not um, you know jumping that well or off on his technique he really analyzes his technique listens to his coaches and and definitely takes to heart what he's trying to do to improve. Good. Uh, Coach Lewis stick with you for triple jump for Luke Jakovic. Yeah Luke is another sophomore of ours <laughs> that's uh, really shown promise again we we really identified these kids as freshmen last year and said, hey, let's get them some varsity experience as much as we can as freshmen, knowing that coming into their sophomore year, they're probably going to be our better varsity athletes. And Luke is another one. Um, he's, he's a triple and long jumper for us and a, a sprinter 
for us as well in the opens and the relay events. Um, so basically, wherever he needs to go, we he, he goes there. Another great kid, coachable kid um, from a good family as well. His sister ran track on the girls team for us. Um, so she was, um, you know, you know, kind of laying the foundation for him and he's really taken up a mantle for his family as well. So Luke has uh, done great things and continues to do so. Um, we're definitely going to try to get to that 40 foot barrier, um, you know, as quickly as we can. So that way he can continue to improve and kind of see some of uh, some more success. Good. Uh, we're not going to be able to talk about the next young man because he, he's a DeKalb young person and, and we haven't gotten coached uh, whole time. Uh, so Toriano Tate is the freshman sophomore leader for DeKalb in the long jump. In the pole vault, uh, we got Grant Sarnis, uh, Coach Stack. Uh, yeah, Grant Saris uh, is a freshman, um, oh and right it's been here. a lot of fun. Uh, kind of just watched him, you know, figure out how to pole vault. I think that ten foot eight jump he had was at um, our very first pole vault meet, um, and uh, back in February seventh, um, and it was like, oh, he didn't know what he was doing. Um, and kind of just, mm -hmm. just he's fast, he's strong, he's gutsy, uh, and he got it out at 10 foot eight. Um, and then since then, we've been starting to throw in technique. Um, and uh, he, he can jump real high, so I'm looking forward to getting outdoors with him um, and that whole crew of pole vaulters. Um, you know, I think he's a product of just being really deep this year and having really good leadership. Um, to which I'm really thankful um, from our pole vault crew. So uh, we get outdoors and sky's the limit for him this season and for the next four years. So looking forward to really seeing development out of Grant. And the last field vet person in the uh, freshman sophomore level is Sam Micah, who is my athlete in the shot put. Uh, Sam is actually having a, a really great year considering he tore his uh, knee up in the summer. Um, mm. Found out he tore his knee up going to a bounce house uh Mark. So we were all worried about overtraining them and over Hard for big men and, and then right. that, uh, that sam was probably having a little bit too much fun but uh sam was a sam's a stud for us uh we were really going back and forth on was he going to be varsity was he going to be fresh saw um really pushing for that 50 foot mark this year and and, and maybe thinking even getting into state qualifying um hoping that we get uh get back and get to see what he gets to do in a sectional so all right, uh, relays. I didn't get any relays down for freshmen, sophomores. Do we want to try to talk about that or just talk, focus on varsity for the relays? I, I'd focus on the varsity. I think they're all mixed yeah. up on athletic diet. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> right. So we'll, we'll lead off with the varsity relay uh, as we go into the juniors and seniors. And April Central had the top time in the four by eight, Coach Stack. Um, yeah, so uh, that uh, would be uh, Patrick Julian, Patrick, Lon who's coming back off of um, our state championship four by eight last uh, spring. Patrick Longatano, who's um, you know been a really awesome piece here, um, kind of in the four hundred, eight hundred middle distance area. Um, you know, Alan Wonky's been a part of that. Arthur Graham's been a part of that. It's kind of been a, a you know we're so. Uh, deep in the 800 right now that you know a lot of guys have good opportunities so as soon as we get going outdoors um, you know it, we got a lot of pieces to pick from so I'm excited to see what those guys do as they're going to keep feeding each other and feeding uh, faster and faster times so uh, that four by eight is going to get uh, faster and faster as we go here. Uh, top time in the 3200 is my senior Wes Beitler. Uh, Wes the week before we shut everything down ran 926 which is a school record for us in the 3200. The previous school record holder for that, the Schumacher, I'll say the Schumacher twins because David yells at me every time I say Mark Schumacher since he was a half <laughs> second behind him. Uh, but uh, the Schumacher twins ran that at Plainfield Central, a sectional, which is eight weeks later in the season. So uh, Beitler ran a really great race there. I was, I was really excited to see him and Jake Allen get to race. We'll talk about Jake when we get to the 1600. Uh, they had raced two weeks prior and Jake beat them by a good three or four seconds, which turned into 20 seconds from the timer somehow. <laughs> um, but Beitler's having a great year. I know there's some scholarship money tied together on being able to run about six to eight seconds faster than that. So I'm hoping that whether it's with an extended IHSA season or USATF summer season, we get the chance to put Wes in the top track again and get a little scholarship money. Um, the two hurdle races are both my guys in both the 60 and 55, Alex Wiley. And I'm sitting here laughing as I read that because I, I got a really great hurdle crew this year. I've got some really talented freshman, sophomores. I've got some real talented junior, seniors. 
and I actually pulled Alex aside between the golf seasons ending and the track season starting and talked to him about, look, if, if you get bumped and you're that third junior senior and you don't get to compete at indoor conference or sectionals, like you're still going to have a role. You know, Spencer Tonks is going to have a great year and Sean Kirk was going to have a great year. And apparently Alex mm -hmm. Wiley decided he was going to have a great year and, and it has marks <laughs> ahead of them right now. Yeah. So uh, really good kid, a lot of AP classes, works really hard. And he's the kid about three weeks out from, from season starting, texts me and says, hey, coach, how do I get into North Central's field house so I can start working on hurdles? And I had to explain to him that you can't just walk <laughs> into someone else's place and start practicing. So that's how excited that kid was to get going on the season and, and was having a great season when we ended up uh, suspending it and, and looking forward to seeing it again. So we got uh, Coach Lewis here is going to talk about a uh, young man in two different events. Uh, Virgil Stewart is the leader in the 60, the 55, and the 200-meter dash. Yeah, this one, this was a tough one to talk about because um, Virgil is the um, consummate person of perseverance. Um, going back to his sophomore year, I mean, going back to his freshman year, really, he, we knew that he was a special kid. He was a fast kid, probably going to be one of the fastest ever in our program. Then his sophomore year comes in, um, played, decides to play football, got an ACL injury. So there went his sophomore year. Then comes back his junior year, had a hard time finding his rhythm, you know, you know, with the ACL injury and kind of the injury like that, you know, your, your confidence is shaken, you know, your psyche is, you know, has to get back on point. You have to trust, you know, the doctors and the people are telling you, hey, you're, you're strong, you're ready. So his indoor season was kind of up and down, then eventually – once he first meet outdoor, basically he he took off from there last year. Um, then coming into this year, um, he had some personal uh, family tragedy um, that happened, um, a great loss um, in his life. Um, but he showed consummate perseverance, um, came to school through it, worked through it, and everything, and was very excited for track season um, and had great success early on. And then now, of course, we have. The stoppage of the season he's a senior now so now we're definitely looking to see what he can do coming into outdoor season and but i know you know through all the you know adversity that he's gone through that you know he'll just basically continue to support him and he'll continue to work hard um you know but he has really really shown me a lot of his character um, more than anything obviously i knew his performance could you know be one of the top in our conference if not the area um, he's a, he was a state qualifier in both the 100 and the 200 last year and, both, and helped our 4 by 2 relay qualify as well last year as our anchor leg. You know, so definitely we're looking for him to do some great things, but definitely, you know, we're looking for him to compete at the next level. So I'm going to be reaching out to as many schools as I can. I've already reached out to schools. So hopefully with this stoppage and, and uh, competition, you know, hopefully his um, you know, performances won't be uh, lost in, in, in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. Uh, next event I have here is on the 800, Julian Head from Naperville North. Has a mark? Yes. Um, Julian, another one of our staples for our distance crew. Um, one of our top, all, uh, top cross country kids last year. Um, came in this year. So far he's ran at, uh, he ran sub two at the York Invite. Um, that was a huge barrier for him to overcome. Um, you know, we're looking at him as a 1600 kid, an 800 kid, and maybe even getting a little bit of dabble in the 400. Um, he's very talented. Um, he's extremely hard worker, great kid. Um, excited to see what he's going to do this year okay. as a junior. And we're going to stick with Naperville North, who has the top time in the 4 by 2 in the juniors and seniors. Uh, awesome crew. Two kids coming back from our four by one state qualifying team, Andrew Lee and Henry Young, um, Damian Welch and Jerome Madison. They ran 134.01 and probably one of the best races maybe in the state with the four by two with uh, St. Charles East, St. Charles North and York at the York invite the last week. Um, you know, those kids have been working hard. Three of those kids have been working hard all year. Andrew Lee was five days removed from being an all state swimmer. Um, four days of practice comes back, you know, really was adamant about competing, said, what do you want to do? How much you want to do? His response was, what do you want me to do? Um, so he's, he's a tough kid, great kid. All four of those guys are awesome. They're working hard. Mm -hmm. Really excited to see where they go um, as a sprint crew into the outdoor season. Um, only one senior in the group, and they're fired up. So excited. They're doing a great job. All right, Coach Lewis, top seed in the 400, Evan Bach from Matia Valley. 
Yeah, this this kid is kind of funny because um, <clears throat> he's a distance kid. But luckily, I have a distance coach who definitely believes and understands that speed is part of distance training. So, um, as so much so that I come up with the hashtag distance running is not slow running. So, <laughs> and Evan is the epitome of that. And that the fact that the kid loves to sprint. So, in the 400, he's really shown some promise this year. Um, he's definitely a 4.8 kid for us. Um, but definitely the 400 is where we're kind of specializing him at this point. Um, he's even done block work. It looks pretty good coming out of blocks <laughs> as well. So definitely I've, I've let all the guys that want to run the 400. I'm like, hey, if you can't come out of blocks, you're not running the race. So he worked hard. Definitely had me <clears throat> at Hananiga show me what he was about. So definitely looking for him to you know, do some great things in the 400 going into outdoor season. So I'm really impressed. Okay. <clears throat> uh, top junior senior mark in the 1600, Jake Allen of Naperville North. Uh, Jake Allen, you know, he's a leader. He's the leader of our team, leader of his guys. Um, he was an All-State, two-time All-State, um, All-State last year in the two-mile. Um, I mean, we all know he's one of the most talented runners in the state, but his toughness is excellent. He's a great leader. Um, he's going to be running for the University of Kentucky as he heads off to college. Um, he's done a great job for us. Really excited to see where he's going to go, you know, and lead that other crew of young kids. You know, he's – I think there's a, maybe a small amount of seniors. We're a very junior, sophomore, freshman dominated team right now. Mm -hmm. um, and he is doing an excellent job of pulling those guys along and setting the standard for what we expect from the team and the program. So he's doing a great job. Okay. Uh, we're going to shortchange him again a little bit because we, we did this too quickly and didn't get Coach Holt. But the uh, lead time in the 4 by 4 is to Kelb. So good, good job for those four guys. Uh, top mark in the high jump is Eric – uh, you can do it. Say it. Yerga. Yerga. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Eric is uh, uh, a great, great, hardworking young, uh, young guy. And, uh, you know, with the craziness of this season and, you know, he hasn't quite jumped as, as high as he can. So that's the exciting thing for him. Um, I don't know if we've jumped in more than one meet where high jumpers could wear spikes. Mm -hmm. um and so uh, just making sure we're using that opportunity but he keeps things light um you know he's a kid who was a specific high jumper last year uh and this year he's really uh taken ownership in um you know getting out on the sprints um and trying you know all the way up to the 400 which um you know field event background coaches know sometimes it's hard to stretch those vertical jumpers into uh into sprinting, especially the 400. Um, we needed a long jumper one meet, and he jumped right in and um, volunteered for that. So, uh, again, like like everyone's kind of saying, I just want to I just want to get outdoors. I want to see how these guys go. I want to get on a track uh, we'll and jump just the see what he does. We'll jump meet into July. It's okay. We will show up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right there with you. All right, leader of the triple jump on the varsity level of uh, Naperville North, Justin Nade? Gennady. Gennady. Justin Gennady. Oh, um, it's, it's like a spell. Double consonant, yeah. guys. Yes. <laughs> um, super talented junior for us. Really, um, you know, he's had some injuries he's had to overcome. You know, last year he had a ham hamstring injury at the York Invite. Didn't jump the entire season until the county meet. Um, very limited practice. Comes out and jumps mid-43s. Um, you know, was right in the top spot to qualify for state as a sophomore. Um, really high ceiling for Justin. He's another one of those guys that naturally pulls guys along with his ability. Um, hard worker. He, uh, he's a multi-sport guy too. You know, a lot of our guys are multi-sport. He's another multi-sport guy that came on and actually served as the kicker for our football team this year um, after never playing before. So he's super competitive and he's doing a great job so far for us. All right, I'm going to start talking about this, uh, the leader of the long jump, uh, because he started at Wabonzi Valley in my world geography class, and I couldn't <laughs> get him to come out for track for the two years we had him, and on day one, he, he jumps and, and sprints at April Central, so Jay Coleman is uh, the leader in the long jump for Coach Stack. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Jay, Jay has just popped off this year. Um, it's been a ton of fun watching him um, and our whole jumps crew kind of uh, come together and really feed off each other. Um, and we're big, big on, you know, start meets off right. And long jump is usually, uh, you know, 
the first chance to kind of get the meet going. Um, and Jay has been that fire uh, each meet. Uh, I think he's jumped over 22 feet every meet uh, this year. And that <clears> meet Warnville South on the on February 1st jumped 22, six and a half, uh, which we didn't even realize because the metric system screwed us up real. I don't know how everyone else is dealing with that, but um, so we, we thought he jumped like yeah. just over 22. And then eventually we realized um, jumped 22, six and a half at one point was leading the state um, and is still up there in the, you know, top couple of the state um, and is now holding our school into a record, which I think dated back until like 1991. So it was kind of cool to see um, him, him get up there and, and take control of the record board. And again, I just, I just want to see him jump outside. Yep. All right, I've been butchering names up and down the line. Coach Stack, I want to talk about your pole vaulter, whose name I'm not even going to try. Come on, Raph, you've been doing all day. <laughs> Anakin <laughs> Rayudu? There you go. See, you got hey! it. You're good. Oh, um, there you go. Anakith is, has, has been uh, putting in this work since, you know, freshman year. I think he jumped 12-1 at some point. Um, and if there's anyone that I would define on our team as a student of the sport, um, it's Anakith, you know, I think he's picked um, Coach Ragusa's brain over at Niqua maybe more than he's picked my brain. I think he got tired of listening to my <laughs> non-scientific answers and then Ragusa can come in and just drop physics on him and that's what uh, he needs um, sometimes. So he's a student of the sport and it's paying off. Uh, he's a great leader, um, you know, and, and uh, he's a big part of the reason why we're as deep as we are in the vault. So um, I said it before and i'll say it one more time i just want to see him jump outdoors yeah we, well i think everyone is there with you on that all right and we're going to wrap this up with uh, matt apple uh returning all stater from nikola valley coach kennedy yeah so matt apple he is one of the um top guys probably we've ever had in our teams in terms of character boy this guy works hard uh he's talented he's a student of the sport he does all the things right um, our throwers program is taking a step forward just because he's in it. Um, the mark he has, that top mark that he has right now, <clears throat> that's not actually the furthest mark. Um, oh. Actually, Aaron was at that meet, but um, mm -hmm. he hit the barrier. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> so it was not, I mean, he's got probably about six more inches on that, but they just so had a mark. You didn't the roll barrier it to the end and then roll it up? It was, it, it was. <laughs> It was an awkward time, and some of the guys actually needed to get their uh, their butts out of the way there because they almost got yeah. hit. But right. <laughs> they didn't expect people to throw that far, and they are actually running out of room because of uh, the pole vault was right there. And mm -hmm. this is a guy who threw it past the barrier. That's yeah. Or yeah. on the barrier. That, that's pretty impressive. But every single time he throws, um, he seems to throw further and further, and he is a competitor. Wow, does he hate to lose. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Matt Apple, one, one of the best uh, we've ever had. All right, so I'll sort of wrap my side up, and then we'll probably go down the line, let each uh, head coach say a little something before we post this online. Um, we just wanted to give something back to athletes that are not able to get together, not have their sector, their conference meet indoors, not be able to go to Illinois prep top times. Uh, if we didn't say your name, it's not because you don't matter. We just we want to keep this concise and not spend hours and hours on it. There's all sorts of deserving young men that are here, and, and I've already got the young ladies at Wabonzi got wind that I was doing this and want us to do something on the women's side. So we'll, we'll the <laughs> of course. Um, and it's look, it's it's going to get harder. I'm I'm sure I'm not the only one whose phone popped up that uh, Illinois Governor Pritzker just issued a shelter-in-place locked uh, lockdown order for everybody. So wow. we're going to maneuver this as you maneuver through it. Residents can still go to the grocery stores, put gas in their cars, take walks outside, make pharmacies runs. All local roads, including the interstate highways and tollways, will remain open. But don't hop the gates to get on a track. Don't go to a right. weight room. If it's the forest preserve, <clears throat> says it's closed, stay out of the forest preserve and follow the CDC orders because what I just talked to my distance kids about this morning has changed four hours later with a new, new announcement. So check the CDC before you do anything and, and be safe and realize your coaches love you. We're excited to see you again. We want to, we're fighting for you to have the season. The IHSA, the last three days has come out very strong that the season is not canceled. We'll look mm -hmm. into pushing it into June and July if need be. And want to give everyone a little something of recognize the young men that, that 
we wanted to see those great performances on North Central's track, and we don't, and, and realize whether you're my athlete wearing green and gold or any of the other five teams at the DBC level, we were all looking forward to seeing you. So, Coach Arthurs. Um, you know, uncertain times, just continue to stick together, make great choices, um, be great together. You're part of the best conference in the state of Illinois, in my opinion, the deepest conference. Um, you know, you look at the programs within this conference and every year you're producing state champions, all conference, all state, you know, big accolades, guys that go on to college and do great things are great people. Um, let's represent that at this time the best way we possibly can and continue that through the end of the school year the best way we possibly can. Uh, Coach Stack. Um, so, you know, I keep coming back to uh, what a whirlwind of a first time first year head coach to kind of get to persevere through all of these things and um, right along with that thought I keep coming back to how hard it seems like everyone's still working and uh, I know the Red Hawks are working and I know uh, the rest of the DVC and I hope 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 and push all of you guys no matter what school you're part of uh, to keep working because you're going to get to race at some point you know you're there's always another race um, and another opportunity to be your best and, you know, we can't encourage you guys enough to, to keep putting in that work, and finding ways to get better, to find ways to be students of the sport, to find ways to represent your school and our conference, um, you know, in a way that when track does come back, when the next race comes back, when the next opportunity to be a good human comes your way, that you keep representing the DVC, West Suburbs, you know, the cities of Naperville and Aurora and Bolingbrook. Um, you know, and your families to the highest degree and the highest caliber that you guys have historically done as, as members of the DVC. So keep going, guys. Um, great things are coming our way if we can persevere through this. All right, Coach Kennedy. Yeah, so, you know, I, I said it before, our whole mission is really about improvement. It doesn't matter if we have a season or not. You should be working out no matter what. There was a kid up in Minnesota just a few years ago. I think he was their state champion a few years ago, a superstar. But up in Minnesota, you can't train year round, really. I mean, it gets, it gets over snowed and everything. Well, this kid just ran around the gym. And I'm talking one court. He just ran around the court again and again and again, putting miles in because it mattered to him. And so if you get outside and you do, you know, a set of 30s because you're a sprinter, or if you get outside and you do a little warm up, you do some plyometrics. If you get outside and you go ahead and uh, get some distance runs in, you are so uh, you're, you're actually taking a step forward each day. And I think that's the important thing. Um, the mission, you know, of, of everybody involved in track and field is to improve. And I think that's what's so unique about all of us sitting here talking about this is we're, we're fans of the sport because this sport is special. You know, my rooting for someone else's performance doesn't affect mine. It doesn't. We can all keep taking that, that same mission. And if we're all on the idea of improvement, it's, it's going to be a great thing when the season does come back. Mm -hmm. Coach Lewis, wrap it up for us. Uh, so one of the things I was thinking about is um, I'm kind of big on quotes, and I kind of roll out each season like a quote for my team to follow. And one of the ones that just really pops up into my mind, it just fits this time, um, something that I saw when I was over in Germany, actually, um, one summer, uh, taking a group of students over there. And uh, – it, it was basically said that adversity lets a man know who he really is. And this is a time of adversity for us all, you know, and that's the thing is that like, these are the times that really test us, but you know what, these are the times that really make us better people. And that's what I think everybody needs to remember during this time is that this is a time of adversity, but we just need to persevere over it. And the thing is, is that like, one of the things I love about track and field as a sport is that we are a true community. Um, we uh -huh. support each other through thick and thin, we always cheer on each other no matter who our competition is. You know, I love working with these other coaches in this conference because again, we're all about the same things. We're all about the sport, we're all about the kids and the athletes and helping each other to find success and better our sport. And, you know, just also things that teach us about life as well. You know, so just remember that these moments that, yeah, we could focus on the negative, but again, think about the positive things that you could do during this time still of adversity and overcome it. And so that way you'll be much better on the other side of it. And then when we actually do get back to competing and going to school and getting back to life as normal, then we're going to be that much better in the end. So I think that's the thing we need to remember 
as we get through these next few days. All right. Listen to the CDC, follow your state and local government's guidelines, be healthy enough that we can put this all behind us in the rearview mirror and get back to life as it's been. Nobody cried, although Coach Stack came the closest. All right, we'll see y'all. <laughs> and video is off. Nope. Uh, there nope, we go. nope, not yet. Nope, not yet. Nope. Not yet. Not yet.